गुड इवनिंग मैम so did you get the study material you were able to do what i told you to do yes ma'am yeah yes ma'am but everybody both of you any doubts no ma'am hmm? you got all the questions correct or was there some doubts somewhere and then you got back to it answer of the 10th question This one? Yes, ma'am. Uh, according to paragraph four, intellectual romance such as Horace, which held which of the following opinions about their civilization? Yeah, this one was of the third. Okay, now when they are talking about these are the intellectual romance. Yeah. Now from the paragraph, what did you get? Now. Uh, It said more uh, modern attitudes of Roman civilization range from infinitely impressed to the thoroughly disgusted. Hmm? That is one point. Now, as always, there is a power of worshippers, especially among historians, who are predisposed to admire whatever is strong, who feel more attracted to the might of Rome than to the subtlety of Greece. Yeah. At the same time, there is a solid body of opinion that strike dislikes Rome. For many, Rome is at best the imitator and the continuator of Greece on a large scale. Yeah, uh, Greece civilization has quality. Rome mere quantity. Greece was original Rome, etc. So it explains all this. So moreover, what what impression are we getting that? Uh, people of the roman civilization admired greece more than they admired rome hmm? so from here what is the option that we come up with then ma'am c option would hmm? best fit this c would best fit so Roman civilization produced little that was original and memorable. So now this is a direct question. Whatever we uh, you are going to choose should be mentioned in the paragraph. Yeah. So ancient works of Greece held little value in the Roman world. That is not true. The Greek civilization had been surpassed by the Romans. No. Romans valued certain types of innovations that they did. Uh, that had been ignored by ancient Greeks. So A, B, and D are definitely incorrect. So we go with C. Roman civilization produced little that was original and memorable. So that is what they say. Uh, we feel more terror now. Yeah, Rome is at best the imitator and the continuator of Greece on a large scale. Yeah. So that's what it is. Anybody else with any? Doubts, ma'am. The seventh question. Seventh question. Uh, paragraph three suggests which of the following about the people of Latium? Hmm? So where did they mention people of Latium? Now, Roman priorities lay in the organization, exploitation, and defense of their territory. In all probability, it was a fertile plain of Latium, where the Latins who founded Rome originated, 
that create the habits and skills of the landed settlement, landed property, landed economy, landed administration, and a land-based society. Yeah. So now when they say suggest, what do you mean? What can you infer? Hmm? So from this, what can you infer? Uh, was able to eliminate C and D option. I'm confused between A and B. Con confused between A and B. You eliminated C and D. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Uh, it says, their economy was based on trade relations with other settlements. Uh, does it specific, uh, say something like uh, trade relationships? They had landed settlement, landed property, and before that, they say it was a fertile plain. Right? Fertile plain, and then everything depended on the land. Landed administration, land-based society. But it doesn't... Do you uh, infer that they had trade relationships with other settlements? No, it's not mentioned. No, yeah. Uh, they have different values than the people of Rome. Does that is that what to be infer from uh, the information given for Latin? No, right? So we can eliminate A and B. Now coming to C and D. Agriculture played a significant role in the society. That could be because it's talking about fertile plain and everything else uh, related to land. Uh, we'll keep that. We'll look at D. They possess unusual knowledge of animal instincts. Uh, do we find that somewhere? No. No. Right? So the only option possible here is C. Yeah. So when you did this question, why did you think A and B would be the answer? Remember, I told you that whenever you are doing a question, any question, go with the reasoning. Reason out for yourself why this should be the right answer. Right? So if you look at the reasoning, you will find that A and B cannot be the answer. Right? Yes, ma'am. Correct? And ma'am, the first question. First question. Um, highlighted sentence. Yeah? So, what does a highlighted sentence say? It says, uh, now we can uh, read the first sentence for reference. There is a quality of cohesiveness about the Roman world that applied neither to Greece nor perhaps to any other civilization, ancient or modern. Yeah, it's talking about, so that's the, you can say that's a reference point. It talks about cohesiveness. Now, like the stones of a Roman wall, which were held together both by regularity of the design and by that peculiar powerful Roman cement. Now, that doesn't, it's not literally cement, but it's talking about the culture and the values. So the various parts of the Roman realm were bonded into a massive, monolithic entity by physical, organizational, and psychological controls. So if you paraphrase this sentence, what do you find? Arushi? Ma'am, I'm not sure, but I selected option D. Okay, first, first you tell me, what did you, how would you paraphrase it? So what is the main idea of the sentence, rather? Uh, that Rome was uh, mm -hmm. united through different con physical, organizational, and psychological countries. Yeah. So, like, it was bound together. Hmm? Yeah. What bounded, uh, what kept it together? Uh, the massive monolithic entity by physical, organizational, and psychological controls. Yeah. 
So if you look at the options, and you said you chose D. Romans built walls to unite the various parts of the realm into a single entity, which was controlled by powerful lords. So this is talking about building walls, physical walls, and which kept it together and was controlled by powerful lords. So does it bring out the essence of the sentence in totality? No. No, it misses out on something. So any of, so that means this option is not complete. Will you choose an option which is not complete? No. No, right? Now, if you look at the others, regularity and power of stone walls inspired Romans, we can eliminate them. Although the Romans used different types of design when building their walls, they used regular controls to maintain their will. No. Even that is not true. Several types of control united the Roman realm, just as design and cement held Roman walls together. So several types of control yes. that it is talking about, and it helped together just as design and cement held Roman walls. So there's an analogy, that analogy comes out in this option, and the several types of control is also mentioned. So it's not one specific or two specifics, but overall, the idea of the sentence is reflected. So your option will be C. Hmm? Yes. Anybody else with any doubts in this passage? Ayan? Yes, ma'am. Uh, did you do the passage? Any doubts? I did the passage. Question 10. Question 10. Oh, question 10 we just discussed. Anyway, we'll go back to it. Okay, uh, so... No, question 10 we did. According to paragraph 4, intellectual roaming such as horror, which of the following opinion? Okay, we just discussed this one. Question 10. So, anybody will explain to Ayan? Revati, can you explain to Ayan the answer to this question? Yes, ma'am. Ma, uh, in paragraph 4, it is stated that intellectuals uh, hold a greater, opi a greater opinion for Greece than Romans. Uh, the um, third line, I guess, in the book, uh, it is uh, written... Uh, who feel more attracted to the might of Rome than to the subtlety of Greece. Uh, and uh, they also... Mm -hmm. uh, add, uh, no, ma'am, actually, it should be the next point. The next yeah. yeah. So for many, Rome is at best the imitator and the continuator. So, uh, they now, held a greater opinion for yeah. Greek than Rome. So uh, they uh, compared Rome and Greek like Rome was quantity and Greek was quality. Rome was derivative and Greek was original. So when we look at the options, option A says ancient works of Greece had little value in the Roman world. Uh, that's, that holds Greece inferior to Roman world. So that is wrong. Uh, then the Greek civilization had been surpassed by the Romans. That uh, This uh, option also is similar to A. Then uh, option C says Roman civilization produced little that was original and memorable. Um, this option is best because it is also stated in the paragraph that Greece was original and Rome was derivative. So C is, uh, is the answer. And right. D... Rome valued certain types of innovations that had been ignored by ancient Greece, and that does it, it is not relevant to the uh, paragraph. Thank you, thank you, Ruti. We'll explain. So, Ayan, have you got your answer? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay, sir, how about you? Oh, no doubt. No doubts? Okay, yeah. great. So, I think we can do another passage today. Hmm? So, okay. so, before we go on to another passage, we'll just about go into a recap of all our strategies. Hmm? So, 
Now, when we are dealing with questions or even options, what do you do? First thing is understand the question. Yeah. So, best thing is to paraphrase it in a simple manner. Hmm? Then uh, you find the keywords. That is important. So, Then you go into looking for keywords. Keywords in the options help you to eliminate the options. Hmm? It becomes easier. Scan the passage for keywords also. And then you try to get the answer. Yeah. Now eliminating uh, which options do you eliminate? I think by now you have a, a, a fair idea. Arushi, so which options would you eliminate? Well, answers that are not relevant to the passage, mm -hmm. uh, which contain half correct information. Right. Anything else? Ma'am, extreme options. Extreme options. Any other point here? Ayan, are we missing out on anything? Remember, we uh, had a question last uh, last time where we were looking for inference and there were options which were direct statements from the passage. Hmm? So when you have inference cost questions, you have to be very careful to look for inferences rather than direct statements. Yeah, that is very important. Right? And anything that is only a repeat information from the passage usually won't be an answer. Yeah? Uh, and yes, the correct answers may have synonyms. That is, it may not be that absolutely the same words. And the negative detail questions You have to be very careful about so that you uh, you don't miss out on what the question is asking you. It happens with students. I've seen that they don't read the question carefully and they actually uh, mark the option which is supposed to be correct because they think everything else is correct, only that is wrong. Yeah. And most important, time management is in, you have to work on time management, right? Okay, now we can move on to our next passage. This is not in your book, uh, but we'll just practice it. And the rest of them you can do for practice. So this is the last reading passage we will do in class. Hmm? And the rest of them will be for your practice so that you know exactly how to deal with them. Okay. So this is a passage which is about history of chicken pox vaccine. How many of you haven't had chicken pox? That's good. So did you take the vaccine? Yeah. So you know that chicken pox vaccine is important. So now let's... I'll go on to the passage. First question is easy. It's just a vocabulary question. So you can quickly give me the answer. Bearable. Hmm? Tolerable means bearable, of course. It could be said, sudden, infrequent, or unexpected. So that's quite obvious. Okay. Now we have a second question. According to paragraph one, which of the following is true of the chickenpox virus? So we have to actually read the paragraph, otherwise we won't be able to answer the question. So somebody wants to volunteer? Hmm? Who wants to volunteer? Yes, please. Yes, 
Yes, Krishna. Uh, chicken pox is a highly contagious infectious disease caused by the varicella zoster virus. Sufferers develop a fleeting itchy rash that can spread throughout the body. The disease can last for up to 14 days and can occur in both children and adults. Though the young are particularly vulnerable, individuals affected with chickenpox can expect to experience a high but tolerable level of discomfort and a fever as the disease works its way through the system. The ailment was once considered to be a rite of passage by parents in the U.S. and thought to provide children with greater and improved immunity to other forms of sickness later in life. This view, however, was altered after additional research by scientists demonstrated unexpected dangers associated with the virus. Over time, the fruits of this research have transformed attitudes toward the disease and, and the utility of seeking preemptive measures against it. So what are the points we get in the passage? Now, your question is, if we take the question into consideration, according to paragraph one, which of the following is true of chickenpox virus? So, the others will not be true. Yeah? So, which one, which ones can we eliminate? A. A and B. A, B. A, B, C and B. A, B, C and B. Not C. Not C. Mm -hmm. C is the correct one. Yeah. Let's look at the points of the passage now. Chicken pox is highly contagious, infectious disease. Yeah. Caused by the vesicle virus, sufferers develop fleeting itchy rash can spread throughout the body. Disease can last up to 14 days, can occur in both children and adults, though young are particularly vulnerable. Individuals infected by chicken pox can expect to experience high but tolerable levels of discomfort and fever as disease works through the system. Ailment was once considered to be a right of passage by parents in the US and thought to provide children with greater and improved immunity to other forms of sickness later in life. This view, however, was altered. After additional research by Sanchez M. Sri, unsuspected dangers associated with the virus. Over time, fruits of the research have transformed attitudes towards the disease and the utility of seeking preemptive measures against it. So, it leads to a potentially deadly disease in adults. We cannot, that's not true. Yeah, according to this paradigm. It is associated with a possibly permanent rash. It's not permanent. Yeah. It is easily transfer uh, transmittable by an infected individual. Uh, it is highly contagious, but easily transferable. Maybe. Let's look at the other one. It has been virtually eradicated in the modern world. It doesn't talk about eradication. Yeah. So B is also eliminated. C is your correct answer. Right? Okay, let's move on to the next. Next question. It's the same paragraph. It's about the highlighted sentence. Uh, information in the highlighted sentence. The ailment was once considered to be a rite of passage by parents in the U.S. and thought to provide children with greater improved immunity to other forms of sickness in later life. Okay, yeah. What do we mean by rite of passage? Any idea? Hmm? A rite of passage is a phrase that is used to indicate that uh, something which gives you the um, power to move on to a different level, right? So in this case, when they say parents considered it to be a rite of passage uh, and 
they thought that it will provide the children with greater improved immunity to other forms of sickness later in life. So this could uh, help them uh, uh, keep them safe from other forms of diseases, right? So let's look at the options. Now you look at the options and tell me which one would be correct. Ma'am, B. B. B or B? B. B. Are you sorry? Are you sure about B? Ma'am, second option. B, second option. Ma'am, A. A. Okay. Have you look at A also? Hmm? Revati, you were saying something? Ayan, what do you think? Ma'am, I think A. E. Hmm? I can't hear you clearly. E, e. e. Okay. So, anyone with any other option? Hmm? Yes, sir. Well, okay, sir, what was your answer? A. A. Krishna? Ma'am, ma'am, B. B. Okay. So let's look at the options. We have A and B as our options. So A says US parents believe that having chicken pox benefited their children. Quite possibly. Hmm? Let's see if we have something more specific. The benefit of their children, it says, but it isn't really specific. U.S. parents believe that chicken pox led to immunity against most sickness. Against immunity against most sickness. Now, this is a little more specific. Right? But does it say the same thing? Uh, greater immunity and uh, greater and improved immunity to other forms of sickness later in life. Yeah. Now, C says U.S. parents wanted to make sure that their children develop chickenpox. Now, that's uh, not really. The ailment was once considered to be the right of passage by parents in the U.S. and thought to provide children with greater immunity. Now that also may be because they uh, they thought that the, uh, their children should develop chickenpox because it will lead to immunity. Uh, but it's not very specific. U.S. parents did not think that other vaccinations were needed after chickenpox. It doesn't talk about that. Now, which of these is the clearest explanation of the given sentence? Which includes the details and gives us the exact same information? Ma'am, option B. Option B. That is the clearest one. So, it gives immunity. Yes? Ma'am, I think option A is correct because in B, it is written against most sickness. But hmm. there is... Nowhere written in the passage that most or major sickness are uh, that is immune it. Like... Most uh, is an extreme word. That is also yeah. correct. Yeah. So when we talk about extremes, we would usually eliminate. Yeah. So parents believe that having chicken pox benefited would be correct. Now, if you look at C, U.S. parents wanted to make sure that the children develop chicken pox. You can't really say that. Considered to be a rite of passage by parents. So, it did benefit their children. That's why they wanted them to have chicken pox. So, I think A should be the best answer. Right? So, do you think we should go with A? Anybody with some other opinion? Alushi? What do you think? 
Ma'am, we should go with A then. Hmm? So it does benefit. Now, C, like they wanted to make sure that they have chicken pox. Uh, that is also a, a little extreme. Making sure that they have chicken pox, that wouldn't be correct. It is close, but I think to, uh, A is the safest answer. Right? Let's look at this one. Now, this is paragraph two. Which of the following can be inferred from the paragraph about clinical trials for chickenpox vaccine? So, your keywords is inferred and clinical trials. Yeah. So, now we have to read the paragraph. Anybody? Let's read the paragraph together. Hmm? Arushi, would you read it? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. A vaccine against chickenpox was originally invented by Michiaki Takahashi, a Japanese doctor and research scientist in the mid 1960s. Dr. Takahashi began his work to isolate and grow the virus in 1965 and in 1972 began clinical trials with a live but weakened form of the virus that caused human body to create antibodies. Japan and several other countries spread began widespread chickenpox vaccination programs in 1974. However, it took over 20 years for the chickenpox vaccine to be approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, finally earning the U.S. government seal of approval for widespread use in 1995. Yet, even though the chickenpox vaccine was available, and recommended by the FDA, parents did not immediately choose to vaccinate the children against this disease. Mothers and fathers typically cited the notion that chickenpox did not constitute a serious enough disease against which a person needed to be vaccinated. So now another thing that um, needs to be pointed out when you are reading, take note of any contrast words. Any words that create a contrast, like however, yet, yeah. So those those help you help you to go into the key points. So here in the big in the first part, it talks about Dr. Takashi's experiment and clinical trials, and that it was adopted adopted in um, Japan and several other countries in seventy four. Now here we have a contrast that it took 20 years to be approved by US uh, FDA and it came into use in 1995. And then we have another contrast that even though it came into use in 1995, parents did not immediately choose to vaccinate. Uh, why? So the why is also important because they thought that it is not a serious amount of disease. Yeah. Okay. So now, what can, which of these can we can uh, infer? They took longer than expected. Would that be correct? They cost a lot of money to complete. It's not mentioned, right? They took a long time to finish. Do we infer that from you? No. Yeah. And they, they took a long time to uh, than expected. It is about a chicken pox vaccine. Can we infer that the production of the chicken pox vaccine itself took a long time? Not really. So we have eliminated A, B, and C. What are we left with? They were ultimately successful. Yeah. So that, yes, we can figure out that uh, the clinical trials took place in Japan, then 20 years passed, and then finally U.S. approved. Yeah, and uh, vaccine was available and recommended. So they were ultimately successful would be your correct answer in this context. Yeah. And we have another question. The word notion. That would be easy. Mamdi. 
belief, right? They were of the belief that, or they believed that. So history, findings, and facts would not be theorized. Yeah? Everyone got these questions? Now let's look at this one. This is paragraph number three. Now we have to read again. Who wants to read? Hmm? Somebody who hasn't read as yet. Yes, sir? How about you? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Strong belief in that view eroded when scientists discovered the link between Varicella zoster, the virus that causes chickenpox and shingles, a far more serious, harmful, and longer lasting disease in older adults that impacts the nervous system. They reached the conclusion that varicella zoster remains dormant inside the body, making it significantly more like for, likely for someone to develop shingles. As a result, the medical community in the US encouraged the development of adoption and use of a vaccine against chickenpox to the public. Although the appearance of chickenpox and shingles within one person can be many years apart, generally many decades, the increased risk in developing shingles as a younger adult, 30 to 40 year old rather than 60 to 70 year, years old proved to be enough to convince the medical community that immunization should be preferred to the traditional alternatives. So what is this paragraph talking about? What is the main idea of the paragraph? Krishna? Ma'am, uh, we can infer that uh, the virus varicella zoster can also uh, cause shingles mm -hmm. uh, because it, uh, it remains dormant inside the body and af uh, after many years or, uh, or, or, or decades, it can ca result in uh, shingles and it is more, uh, uh, I think the risk is more uh, among the adults uh, which are uh, between 30 to 40 years than the older uh, people. Mm -hmm. uh, increased risk in developing symptoms as a younger adult. Okay, so now what after that? Here's another point that this was uh, enough to convince medical community that immunization should be preferred. Yeah? Okay, so now According to the paragraph, which of the following is true of the varicella roster? So which ones would be true? It attacks adults who are over 60 years. No, it can be 30 to 40 also. It is linked to a serious disease that occurs more commonly in adults. Yeah, that we can say. It is likely not a serious enough threat to human health to require a vaccine. No. It is completely eradicated from the body after chickenpox occurs. That's also not true. So our only possible option is B. So elimination helps you to get to the answer. Okay, now here we have one which says accept. According to paragraph three, which all of the following is true, except so which one of which one of these is not true? Now look at the two questions. They uh, put the questions uh, one after the others to confuse you a little. But in the first one, uh, it was that which one of these is true. Now suddenly the next question they ask, what is not true? So if you're not careful, you will go and choose what is true. You will be looking for what is true. Yeah? Okay. So what is not true? What will be the answer here? For these two distinct yet related elements, is true. People did not view it as a serious public health threat. That is also true. People did not do it. Medical uh, paternity did. 
it tended to quickly become dormant and remain inoperative over time. Hmm? Can we say that? Vaccination against it would help prevent the onset of shingles. A vaccination against it would help. So immunization should, is preferred. Yeah, that is also true. So which one is not true? Mama, I think it should be C because in the paragraph it is said mm -hmm. that varicella zoster remains dormant inside the body, making it significantly significantly more likely for someone to develop shingles. So yeah, it so it remains inoperative in over time. So that how much time we don't know, but it is inoperative for some time. It comes back. So we will go with C which would be our correct answer because all of them are true except this is we cannot say for sure. Right? Okay. Now let's look at the next one. Author uses booster shots as an example of. Now here we are not looking at meaning. Anything that is highlighted, we are not always looking at meaning. So what type of question is this? Rhetorical question. Yeah? Why does the author say this? Yeah. So again, we have to read the passage. Anyone wants to read the passage? I am. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Another, another reason that the chicken box vaccine was not. Mm -hmm. Ayan, can your voice be a little louder? Or you could be closer or something. Now is it louder? Yeah, somewhat. Okay. Another reason that the chickenpox vaccine was not immediately accepted and used by parents in the US centered on observations made by scientists that the vaccine simply did not last long enough, did not confer a lifetime of immunity. In other words, scientists considered the benefits of the vaccine to be temporary when given to young children. They also feared that it increased the odds that a person could become infected with chickenpox later as a young adult, when the rash is more painful and prevalent and can last up to three or four weeks. Hence, allowing young children to develop chickenpox rather than take a vaccine against it was believed to be the lesser of two evils. This idea changed over time as booster shots of the vaccine elongated immunity and countered the perceived limits on the strength of the vaccine itself. So now your question, now what do we get from this? Number one, that the vaccine did not have long lasting effect. Hmm? So people started thinking that uh, developing chicken pox rather than taking the vaccine would be better. Hmm? Because uh, anyway, even if they took the vaccine, they would be uh, getting chicken pox later in life which would be more painful. This uh, idea changed over time as booster shots of the vaccine elongated immunity. So uh, one vaccine and then with booster shots, the immunity was moved. So now the author uses booster shots as an example of what? A scientifically approved medicine to eliminate chickenpox the preferred method of chickenpox rash and fever treatment, no. A way to increase the effectiveness of the chickenpox vaccine. So that we could say that an increase booster shot would be increasing the effectiveness. A strategy for parents to avoid vaccinating their child altogether. So what would be your answer then? C is the best option. Hmm? Right? So let's look at the next question. It is the word conquered. Closes in meaning to. So what do we get here? Ma'am defied. Defied. Hmm? Now affirmed will not be, supported will not be the opposite in meaning. 
you shifted and defined the both synonyms. Right? Now, in this context, what are we talking about? Hmm? Yes? Ma'am, the booster shot like um, changed the view that was earlier held hmm. uh, against vaccines. Yeah. So? Uh, it proved wrong the earlier notions. So, hmm. it Change Define. over time and booster shots of the vaccine uh, I think it should be elongated, elongated immunity countered the perceived limits uh, on the strength of the vaccine. So perceived limits, what were the perceived limits? It changed perception. Yeah. So what they thought earlier, that was changed. So would you say defied or refuted? Refuted would, mean, refuted would mean that it disagreed with the perception. Right? So, would it be defied or refuted? Anushi, you are saying refuted. Hmm? Yes. Okay. Ayan, what do you think? Um, I think defied. You think defied. Krishna? I'm defied. Yes, sir. So, when do you use defied? Defied is used in a stronger sense. Now, one thing you have to remember when you are using the words, they may mean the same, yeah, but the context in which it is used may differ, right? So when you say defying something means you are breaking, it refers mainly to something like breaking norms or breaking rules, yeah? Defying a law. But when you are talking about a concept or a thinking which is changing or an idea or a belief that you have and somebody is saying that you are wrong, that would be refuted. So in this case, refuted would be a better word than defied. Got it? Hmm? Arushi? Yes, ma'am. Now this is paragraph number four. Anyone wants to read? No, I want to read. So do you want me to read? Okay, let's see. Another reason that the chickenpox vaccine was not immediately accepted and used by parents in the US centered on observations made by scientists that the vaccine simply did not last long enough and did not confer like an immunity. Okay, it's the same paragraph, no? Yeah, so you already read it. Uh, no. So now was a question. According to paragraph four, many parents did not choose the chicken pox, pox vaccine because. So this is a direct question. Hmm? Why did they not choose the chicken pox vaccine? So the paragraph says that uh, initially the scientists said that it was temporary and uh, it wasn't effective enough. So they believed that the virus was weak and not specially harmful. Was that the reason? No. They thought that the scientists did not have enough data to reach a conclusion. Conclusion of what? Enough data, is it, is it talking about enough data? Not really, yeah? They were unsure about the utility of the vaccine given its expected duration. That could be an answer. They were convinced it was potentially very toxic, particularly for older children. Does it talk about being toxic? Not at all, yeah? So, what would be the answer then? Ma'am, I think option C, because option it is the C. best fit according to the passage. 
So that is something which we get directly from the passage. Yeah. So A and B can be eliminated. Now we have the word prevalent in the passage is closest to meaning two. Now does prevalent mean widespread, right? So it wouldn't be infectious. It is more painful and prevalent. That is, it is, uh, it is more prevalent usually is used when we are talking about more. So white press, widespread would be your preference. Okay. Now, which according to paragraph five, according to paragraph five, which of the following was true of the rates of chickenpox before the chickenpox vaccine became widely used. Now, this is a new paragraph, paragraph five. So, you got to read it. Hmm? So, no one wants to read it? Yes, uh, uh, can I read? Yes, Devati, whoever wants to read. Today, today, use of the chickenpox vaccine is, uh, is common throughout the world. Pediatricians suggest an initial vaccination shot after a child turns one year old with booster shots recommended after the child turns eight. The vaccine is estimated to be up to 90% effective and has reduced worldwide cases of chickenpox infection to 4, four lakh cases per year from over 4 million cases before vaccination became widespread. A. In light of such statistics, most doctors insist that the potential risk of developing shingles outweigh the benefits of avoiding rare complications associated with inoculations. B. Of, of course, many parents continue to think of the disease as an innocuous ailment, refusing to take preemptive steps against it. C. As increasing numbers of students are vaccinated and the virus becomes increasingly rarer, however, even this trend among parents has failed to halt the decline of chickenpox among the most vulnerable populations. Okay, so what do we get from this paragraph? What is the main point or main idea of this paragraph? How do you see? That it has reduced cases of uh, chicken pox mm -hmm. after the vaccination was taken. Right. And it outweighs the risks of inoculation, but some parents are still not convinced. Yeah. So question number 12 is there. You can give me the answer to 12 now. Ma'am C. A. A and C. Okay, ma'am, can I change my option? Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think it should be A. It should be A. Mm -hmm. Your question is, according to paragraph 5, which of the following was true of the rates of chicken pox before the chickenpox vaccine became widely used. Yeah. Just uh, your keyword here is before. So before the vaccine came, came in, the rates were. Now, after the vaccine, it was four lakh. Before it was four million. So how many times? It was 10 times higher. Yeah. It was consistently rising before, we can't say that. It declined over time, but that doesn't take into consideration the rates before. Fluctuated over several decades, no. So it's only A that is correct. Ayan, do you agree? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now I think we come to yeah, so this is your sentence placement question. So I'm not giving, giving you the answer to this. You will give me the answer and explain.
Yes, anybody found the answer? What is the keyword in the sentence that you are going to put in? Which will determine where it should be should go. And the word sum. Remember last time we said we had they or these. Now here, what does some refer to? That will give you the clue. Some continue to remain unconvinced. Who are unconvinced? Or continue to remain unconvinced. Now, if you look at the, uh, this sentence, vaccine uh, reduces the worldwide cases. In such light of statistics, most doctors insist that potential risks are developing symptoms outweigh the benefits. So here we have most doctors. Yeah. Meanwhile, some continue to remain unconvinced. This is a contrast being given. It is a contrasting statement. So does this contrast the statement in the light of such statistics? Hmm? Or does it contrast, of course, many pa parents continue to think? What does it contrast? So bo both these have can refer to some. Parents can refer to some, doctors can refer to some. Right? But what is a contrasting idea? Hmm? Krishna? What could be the contrasting idea? I think it should uh, refer to the doctors, I think. The doctors, right? Should, uh, option A should be done. Hmm. So it doesn't contrast what the parents are saying. Now, uh, these are the only two which we can refer to as some. So we cannot place it in C because it isn't contrasting what the parents are saying. Yeah? Parents continue to think. Some continue to remain unconvinced. It doesn't go. It can contrast what the doctors are saying. Most doctors insist. Meanwhile, some continue to remain unconvinced. Right? So we can place it at B. So what's your answer then? B is your answer. Right? These are uh, questions. Uh, yes. yes. You were saying something? Ma'am, I have a doubt. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, it's not the question. I just want to ask. Where would be the sentence placed if uh, if I choose option A? It would be placed before A, right? Yeah, before A. That that A. At A. At A. So if when you were choose... when you were given these uh, letters inside in the passage, you are placing the sentence at that place. So it is between the previous and the next. So it's at A. Your B means between the previous and the next at B. Right? So whenever you are given this type of placements, that means you have to put the sentence here. So if you put the sentence here and read the passage again, they should be continuity. So if you place the sentence here, do we get continuity? In the light of such statistics, most doctors insist that the potential risks of developing shingles outweigh the benefits of avoiding rare complications associated with inoculations. Meanwhile, some continue to remain unconvinced, citing the supposed potential of vaccine, uh, a supposed potential of the vaccine to do harm. Right? That makes sense? Krishna? Hmm? Does it make sense? Okay, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yeah. Of course, many parents continue to think. So this is a continuation of the thought. So B, B is the best option. So these are questions which take a little longer time and we have to make sure that you get it correct. Hmm? Don't hurry through it. You should have enough time to do it. Okay, now is your 
summary question sort of. Complete the table below by indicating which statements describe chicken pox and which describe shingles. So this should be easy. We have to just segregate the statements into chicken pox and shingles. So they have given us two and three. This question is worth three points. So you have to get all the options correct to get three points. If you get two correct and two wrong, you don't get three points. Yeah. So you have seven options. Of the seven options, you will be eliminating two. So do you want to scroll through the passage once? Public, now your uh, options are public vaccination campaigns against it began in the 70s. It was considered an awesome but relatively harmless ailment. Yeah. So in, initially, was it considered harmless? Which one was considered harmless? Chickenpox, obviously. Yeah. So we can be can relate to chickenpox. Public vaccination campaigns against it began in the 70s. We have to confirm whether it was 70s. But yes, vaccination campaigns against shingles, did it begin in the 70s? It primarily affects adults. Which one? Shingles. So B, we don't eliminate B, we cross the shingles. It is a serious lingering illness. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Now, it is a serious lingering illness. Which one is it? Yeah. Any of them are? Does the passage talk about lingering illness? Which one is lingering? I'm sure. No. Shingles. Linger. Remember, it said dormant. Hmm? Which would be the same as lingering. So it lingers in your body and comes, wakes up when you are an adult. So D could be referring to shingles. Uh, it negatively affects the nervous system. What affects shingles. the nervous system? Shingles. Infection primarily occurs as a result of close contact with infected rashes. Now, rashes were about? Chickenpox. Chickenpox. There is a confusion as to exactly what virus causes it. Is there a confusion? We can eliminate G. Yeah. So, public vaccination campaigns against it began in the 70s. Do we have that? Hmm? Uh, began in 72, began clinical trials. Uh, several countries began widespread chickenpox vaccine in 74. But in general, it began in 1995. Yeah. So I think to say that uh, it began for all public in 70s wouldn't be correct. Well, but hmm? uh, in F, it is written infected rashes. Hmm. And not specifically the rashes caused by some virus. Uh, so if the infected rashes, okay. yeah, but the uh, rashes are infected by the virus. We can say, okay, let's see. What do we have? Like, other things. So A we eliminated. G we eliminated. We and have A two, could three, be four, answer. five. Hmm? A could be the public answer. vaccination began against it in the seventies. In uh, most of the countries, yeah, uh, some countries, Japan and some countries, it began. When we say began, right, you are right, it just began. I was thinking about widespread. 
Ma'am, the yeah. ma'am, I think the, uh, the campaigns began in nineteen ninety five because it was approved twenty years later. Mm -hmm. After twenty years of uh. No, we we can look at it in two ways. So, so we can see now it says it began in the seventies would be true because it began in Japan and other countries in the seventies. Yeah, it was approved for US uh, maybe later. But began would be true. Now, if we look at E, would it be, um, no, if we look at F, infection primarily occurs as a result of close contact with infected rashes. Yes, you are right. It is not specific. Right? So, if it would have said that infected by the virus, it would be referring to chicken box. But this is more I of a... Ma'am, actually, we mm -hmm. should eliminate B because it is not a harmless ailment. It is very dangerous for children. Ma'am, chicken pox? No, but uh, uh, they talked about, like, the parents thought that their children should have it because it gave immunity and it was uh, more or less harmless. It did not cause much problem. It was not a deadly ailment. So we could say that it was it caused it caused irritation, it caused problems, but it was not deadly. In fact, it led to immunity. Remember, it was a right to passage. And even doctors thought that yes, it is not uh, harmful as such, but it causes problems later on. Yeah. So B we can keep affects for uh, this is about shingles. D is about shingles. Negatively affects nervous system is about shingles. And just infected rashes wouldn't be correct to say. Right? So F we can only. So we can have uh, A and B. Referring to chicken pox, C, B, and E referring to children. Right? So, some of the uh, options they will give you would be a little confusing or very close, but may not be very specific. So, we can eliminate. Yeah? So, here if we look at A, what, why did we keep it? Because it said began. That was our keyword. Right. So if it if it said that public vaccination campaigns against it uh, was widespread in the seventies, it would have been wrong. But began in the seventies is correct. Okay. Let's we'll see if it has any other questions. So that was our reading passage. Hmm? So you think, uh, I suppose you will be able to handle reading passages now? You know how to handle them? Hmm? Any doubts with reading passages? Revti? No? Easy to handle? And since they're all paragraph-wise, I don't think it's going to be a problem for anyone. Right? Okay, so... So, so I think we will move on to our listening section. Hmm? What do you think?
Okay, so now in TOEFL listening, now you people listen to a lot of things, some lectures from your teachers, on YouTube, lots of things, Instagram also lots of things, hmm? TED Talks, whole lot of things you listen to and you can comprehend also very well. Yeah. Now, first we'll go through the listening section format. Yeah. Okay, so this is an old one. Sorry, I've got the unrelated version. Very much. So listening section, you will you you will get. Three lectures uh, for three lectures and six questions per lecture, two conversations, and the total time will be 36 minutes, not 41 to 57 minutes. Yeah. So that's what we had talked about earlier. Order. Now, when you talk about the audio clips, you will get academic lectures. So the lecture will be about a particular topic. It could be just a lecture or there could also be some classroom interactions with the students, so the students are asking questions. Now the questions you will get maybe on the lectures or on both the conversation and the lecture. So we have monolo monologic or interactive. And when you, we are talking about conversations, it's usually a campus situation. So maybe uh, like you are uh, when you go to your school's office and talk to the staff over there about some problem, or you are talking to a particular professor about some particular problem. Maybe you can't you haven't submitted your assignment. You want more time to submit assignment. Something other. So it is a campus situation, and you will have questions about what they are talking why they are saying so, etc. The catch is that the audio clip will play only once. Yeah? So you have to be taking down notes. You have to listen, take down notes. Don't try to write down every single thing. It will not, even if you want to, you cannot play it again in your exam. Hmm? And secondly, questions will not appear before the track plays. Questions will come up only after the track has finished. So when you are listening to the track, you don't know what questions will come up. Yeah. So you have to take down the main points, even maybe small details sometimes. So, and... Your timer for, yeah, this is good that the uh, amount of time that the track plays is not counted in your answering time. But that becomes very, very easy. And about, you get about 35 seconds to answer each question, which is quite a lot of time. If you look at it, you would sometimes think that, okay, why doesn't it get over soon? So now when we come to the question format, you it is all multiple choice, four answer to your choices, one draw point. And in some cases, they may ask you to choose two options, but they will tell you that you have to choose two options. And maybe sometimes even the uh, notation of the box may be different. It may be, uh, otherwise it may be uh, round, or oval uh, or square, but they will always tell you. But even if you have told to choose two options, it is still one draw point. It's not two points. And unless you get both of them correct, you don't get the point. Yeah, similar to the reading one. Unless you get all your options correct, you don't get the credit. So there's no partial credit. Now, there are also questions which uh, are like 
put the steps in order or match the uh, objects in the text. Mm -hmm. So matching you have done earlier when you were in school, maybe even in the 10th. And there will be at least one or maybe two replay questions where they will play only a part of the clip. And sometimes the question is also in that clip. Or maybe the question is written down. Usually it is in the clip. And the question will be related to that particular part of the clip. But you will get four options for that. So that is also one your point. Okay. Now the listening questions, yeah, the reading questions, you, the, you have the option of going back to the question, putting it for review, not answering, going back to it. But in listening, you don't have that option. So you have to answer the question, submit, and then move on. You can't come back to it. And you have to answer all of them one. Yeah. So that is one thing you have to keep in mind. So once you uh, there is you submit, then you press OK. You can't come back to the question after that. Hmm? So once you have answered, you have to forget about it. You can't say, oh my god, I think that answer was wrong. But it's gone. Hmm? So you have to be very careful before you answer. Now, what are, the, what are they testing you on this? Of course, your basic comprehension, how you understand the topic or even the subtopics, how you synthesize the information. So when you are analyzing, sometimes you, you and the question also will be either direct questions or inference questions or even rhetorical questions. Yeah. So, you may have to just questions, which are the direct ones, the main or the main idea of the passage. So it could be about the entire passage, a whole lecture. And then at the end, they ask you, what was the lecture about? Maybe the lecturer began with something and then went on to another topic. And then the entire lecture was about that. And in the, even the notes you missed out on that, you will get your answer off. So it's very important to take your notes carefully. Then there'll be the detail question. There's a direct one, particular important details. Function question. So why did the author say this? Or what was the uh, what was the speaker thinking when he said so? Yeah. It could be something like that. Attitude questions. Was the speaker certain about what he was saying? Or was he uncertain? Did he, what was was the speaker doubtful? Maybe you ask, uh, you go to the office and say that uh, I submitted it. Now the uh, counselor at the office said that says that, but I haven't got your assignment. You said I submitted it online. And say, are you sure? So what is it? There's a there's an element of doubt. So you have to take those. So the tone, how, what they are saying, plus the tone, both of them are important. Then one thing is important here is when, especially in a le lecture, shifting from the general to the specific. So when you talk about shifting from general to specific means, now suppose a lecturer is explaining something about, say, we take the example of climate change. Yeah. Now, the different factors relating to climate change. From that, it comes down to a, discussing a particular factor. So what, what is the lecturer doing? Going from general to specific. So when you talk about what is the lecture about, it is about climate change. But when you come down to what is the specific point that the lecturer raises, we have to be careful about what notes you have taken down. Yeah. Yes, Kesar, any problem? I hope you are following. Mama, have, Mama I have guessed. So there is a bit of disturbance. Otherwise okay. it's 
Okay, from that, uh, let me remind you, when you are practicing for TOEFL, practice with disturbing surrounding. Why? Hmm? You should be able to focus with disturbance because when you are in the examination center, maybe you are doing the reading section or the writing section while somebody else is doing the listening section or the speaking section. If the other person who has come in earlier has already reached the speaking section, that will cause some disturbance to you. Yeah. So you should be able to focus even when there is some sort of sound around you. So when you practice for TOEFL, never practice with closed doors, absolute silence. Sit in a place where there are people moving along, they're talking or the TV is also on. Remember, when you get headphones at the center, they are not noise cancellation headphones. You'll get normal headphones where you can listen, but some sort of disturbance or something. Because I have had students who have complained that there was too much disturbance. We couldn't focus. So you have to practice focusing with disturbance around. Yeah. Good that you brought that up. Otherwise, I would have forgotten to mention this. Okay. So now we're moving on. Uh, connecting the pieces of information is very important. So maybe there is one piece of information somewhere in the beginning of the conversation or the lecture and another towards the end of it. If you have taken down your notes on both, you will be able to connect. So when you're taking down notes, you will remember, okay, this was said at this point of time. Another point was brought up later on. How do you connect it? Yeah. And of course, inference questions will always be there. Now, how do you deal with the inference question? Of course, the... Uh, language, intonation, all these will help you to infer about a person's attitude, a person's stance for something. Maybe something somebody is confident about saying something. So how that person says it will be important. Yeah. So again, we have to strategize what we are doing. So listening strategies, take notes, very important. Yeah. Now taking, uh, now taking notes and listening to something is crucial not only to the listening comprehension, but also in your speaking section and writing section. So practicing this particular skill will be crucial to get scores in all the sections apart from me. Okay. So, I guess I already told you that we don't hear the recording again. So now when you, what do you take down? That is important. Do you take down every single word spoken? You can't. If you start take down, now in a lecture, especially when there's a whole lot of information, you can't take down every single sentence. So what do you focus on? Main ideas. Keywords. If you've written the key, now you have listened, you listen to a lecture and the questions come up immediately after that. Yeah. So even you, at least something you remember, but if you don't take down notes, you will miss out on those points. Hmm? Don't depend solely on your memory. But at the same time, don't take down every single sentence or every single word from the lecture. Maybe you are writing down an entire sentence. By the time you finish the sentence, two other points have already been mentioned by the lecture. So it's no use taking down an entire sentence. So you focus on the keywords. And uh, you just... When you are writing maybe a phrase from the sentence when you take down, when you go back to the questions, you can recall the rest of the information. Hmm? So depend on your memory plus your notes. Now, when you are taking down the notes, one thing you have to remember is nobody else is going to read your notes. What you take down only you have to understand. 
whether you take down in Chinese, Japanese, Greek, doesn't matter. Whether somebody else can understand your handwriting or not, doesn't matter. As long as you can understand what you have written. If you know shorthand, you can use abbreviations, symbols, as long as you understand. Right? So taking down those notes if you practice would be very, very helpful. Now, nowadays, I don't think anybody knows shorthand. Earlier, stenographers used to learn shorthand. Now, that's not required, so you don't learn. Typing and shorthand, we usually don't learn. So, what do you... Now, when I say don't take down everything, what do you focus on? Important points. But while you are listening, how do you know it is important? Transition words. Right? Now, suppose a lecturer is talking about a certain point and she says, now let us talk about. Now let us talk about tells you that something more important is coming up. Yeah? If the lecturer says, however, that means some contrasting point is coming up. Right? Therefore, means some reason is coming up or because. So all these transition words are, now transition words you have done in SAT also, you know what transition words are. Hmm? So any of those transition words coming up, you know you have to focus on it. So when you're talking about academic lectures, as we said, what do you do? Your main ideas are important. Paragraphs. So when you are uh, when you are listening to something, you can make up. Okay, this point, uh, a topic sentence comes in, explanation is there, then it goes into another topic. Details are given. So those details are required. Yeah. And especially when you are talking about uh, when the when the track is a, uh, for a listen, speaking uh, section or a speaking task, it may refer to particular paragraphs in the given passage. So writing, uh, taking down notes corresponding to those pa paragraphs would be important. So topic sentences, So topic sentences, supporting ideas, transitions, and other markers. When you say other markers, anything else that comes up. Okay, now let us go back to, yeah? So that means going back to a particular point. So that means it is something important, the question may come up. Or maybe even when you are doing your, uh, now in your speaking section, usually when you have a lecture, you have to summarize the lecture and focus on a specific uh, point or issue according to what the question is asking you. But summarizing the entire lecture is important. Now, what do you have to take note of? What the professor is trying to accomplish? Means, is she trying to explain something? Is it, is she try, he or she trying to contradict something? Yeah, like in the speaking section, usually uh, you have one task where a passage is given to you, which expresses a certain opinion. The lecture expresses a different opinion and gives explanations for that. So it is important to note what the opinion is and what are the supporting points. Yeah. Like, and as the lecture continues, you it may go from one topic to another topic. So is the same topic continuing or a new topic is coming up? If a new topic is coming up, you should have written down what the topic is. Yeah. Or is there an explanation which makes something clear? Are the two different opinions? Anything can come up. So it is important to take down every single thing. 
having interactive lectures or, or conversations. What are we talking about? Especially when we are talking about a lecturer, giving a lecture, a student raising a point, asking a doubt or contradicting a particular point raised in the lecture. So what is the student asking? What are they trying to learn or show? So if the lecturer is explaining the point, or maybe sometimes it can happen that the lecturer is not explaining the point immediately. The lecturer may continue with the lecture and maybe towards the end, okay, let's go back to the point raised by so-and-so. So you, then you should know, okay, what was the point raised? Or what was the question asked? Or maybe at the end, uh, you can even get a question like, uh, why did the lecturer respond to the point raised? It could be just about anything. Yeah. So how does the lecturer respond is important. Why does the lecturer respond is also important. So when you are taking notes, what do you put down? The topic of the conversation or lecture, that is important. Yeah. So first thing is topic. Then key points, reasons, examples. So when you are doing your speaking section, the reasons and examples you have to explain in your response. So if you don't have those reasons and examples written down, you'll be missing out on important information, right? Terminology and phrases. So a particular term used, write it down. Any particular phrase which is important, write it down, right? You don't need to take down the entire sentence. Opinions, questions, reactions. So usually when you have a conversation, opinion of the main speaker is important. But there could be supporting reactions and supporting questions, which will help you answer the question when it comes to speaking or even in your listening section. Now, any solutions or suggestions given? Take note of this. Yeah. And decisions made. What was the conclusion? So that will give you the conclusion sometimes. Or was there an op a decision made by the university maybe? So that would be crucial to answering a question. So maybe the registrar says that the university decided to discontinue this process this year. And then you go on that, it may go on that the students said that, but I already took this particular assignment. But then he's not going to get paid for that. Yeah? So all these would be very important. So when you're talking about writing your notes, don't write haphazardly. Follow the organization of the lecture. That will help you answer the questions properly. Ideas related to relationships within the lecture, that is what is the relationship between the so analogies or uh, the relationship doesn't mean always human relationship, relationship between ideas. Whether an idea is supporting the previous idea or it is contrasting the previous idea, whether there is a change in uh, say format, all those things are important. So the expressions, as we said, the tone, the vocabulary, type of information, everything would be important. And of course, phrases that show the okay. Then how do we know it is an opinion? Phrases such as "I think," appears that it is thought that. When you use this, when you express your opinion, I agree or disagree. Now, when you have a lecture and it says, but there is a, another hypothesis about. In the beginning, it began with theory. Now, you should know the theory and hypothesis. 
is the same thing. Yeah, that much of course it may be very nice. Interference. So now any words like therefore or then means something more coming up. Additionally, so as I said, all the transition words are important. Negatives. What do negatives give, give us? It's very important to take note of negatives. Not word, not. Or words that begin with un, non, this. Or oh, these turn the words into negative words. So all the negative words are very important. Right? They could be fillers. So you can ignore the fillers or you can take it as expressing doubt sometimes. Sometimes when somebody has ex expresses doubt or is not sure about something, they would be they would be using these type of uh, um usually we come across those. And you find digression means moving away from the main topic. So uh, a lecturer is discussing a particular topic. Suddenly, the lecturer uh, moves on to another topic and then comes back to the main topic. So maybe you get a question on that digression also. Yeah. Now you we were talking about transitions. When we talk about reasons, you come across with words like because, since, results. As a result of so, therefore, thus, consequently. Yeah. Examples. For example, such as that's simple to know. Hmm? Comparisons or analogies in contrast, more than, stronger than. Right? So, when you come across with the, uh, the words than or in contrast to, you know, comparisons are being given. Opposing idea. On the other hand, we find that some wildlife is diminishing in the rainforest. Yeah, so contrast to the previous idea. However, we set up a contrast to the previous idea. So here also you will be connecting the two ideas. To all these what do uh, transition words do? They set up a connection between the ideas. Yeah. Now when you have one main idea is being discussed or one point is being discussed, it goes on to a second point. So what do you get? Furthermore, moreover, or besides, furthermore means continuation of the same point. Moreover, an additional point is being given. Besides, it may be an additional point or a contrasting point. When you have a similar idea coming up, similarly or likewise, so you can use symbols to indicate these in your write in your notes. You don't need to write similarly. You can just use a symbol, right? If you go, go into contrast, you can use a symbol, whatever you feel like. Now those symbols need not be things that are always used. It could be something that you make up. As long as you remember what it meant. Right? So like if you talk about increasing, decreasing, more than, less than, then you need not write words. Now if there are restatements of information, you'll get in other words. That is. Hmm? So this, these are important not only in your listening, even in your reading, you have seen that all these transition words are very important to figure out what the author is trying to say. Of course, when you talk about conclusions, you know what transition words, when you say in summary, that is also a conclusion. Hmm? In the end, I conclude by, 
all these will be conclusive. Now, what some things you have to keep be very alert about phrases or words that are repeated or even paraphrased. Like in the reading, remember, we have words which are used in the passage, but different words are used in the question. Similarly, here, some words may be used in one part of the passage or the lecture, and a different word can be used. When, especially when information has been repeated, the same words are usually not repeated. So a particular information is given. It goes on to add an information. So different words can be used. So you have to know what is being said. Now if some, something is said louder and clearer, what does it indicate? The lecturer or the speaker is stressing on that. Right? Now pauses, these are also important. So when you are talking, to, when you are listening to a lecture or listening to a talk, when a pause comes in, what does it indicate? Either something more important is coming up or there's going to be a change in topic, usually, right? And another thing in the listening section is there will be some visual materials like blackboards with words or phrases or some technical words written. Maybe it is the, it, uh, you could have a blackboard written biology in the beginning. So that means, and another thing is that instructions will be given to you. Now listen to a lecture in a psychology class. And now listen to a lecture in a business class. So that will give you an idea of okay, what you can tune your brain to listening to a particular lecture. Now you know that, okay, this is what it is going to talk about. Now technical words, you can have blackboards or slides coming up in between the lectures with it. Say it is talking about a biology class, maybe talking about the animal kingdom, yeah? Or again, maybe it is talking about mammals. So different words come in, which gives you the clue that, okay, these are the keywords. So this part of the lecture is talking about this. They can also give you headings or divisions. Now within the lecture, the dates, times, purpose, even excuses and conversations are important to mark, right? So those will be some important informations. And sometimes they also can give you graphics or illustrations to support something in a lecture. So maybe the in a business class, the lecturer is talking about, say, uh, demand for a particular um, make of car has gone up because of its performance. So there could be a graph to show that, okay, it was say in uh, 2010, there, there were 100 cars sold. So you have a graph coming up and in, or maybe a histogram coming up. And in 2023, there are about 150 cars sold. So that gives you a visual effect and you can take note of that. Okay. So overall, we can say that facts and information from the recordings you have to remember. Now, what you the notes you are taking down are a support to your memory. Right? It may be very difficult sometimes in a lecture to take down the notes, but there's a whole lot of information and the speed is going to be quite fast. So if the speed is fast and so you have to practice like that. So if you look up the um, websites of TOEFL uh, practice, you will find lectures which are in three different speeds. They'll give you the beginner speed, they will give you the advanced speed, and they will give you the actual examination speed. 
So that gives you practice about uh, of taking down notes and progressing with uh, taking uh, notes taken. So these are the type of blackboards that come up. Yeah. So maybe blue or blue or something. So this I already told you earlier. Abbreviation symbols, capital letters. Now anything written with capital letters, you may see, you, according to you, it may be something important. Or it may be a name or a particular phrase which is important can be uh, written with capital letters. So you have to take down your notes fast enough, concise, do not write sentences. Never ever. The moment you start writing the sentences, you're gone. Then at the end of the lecture, you will say that I couldn't take down notes. Yeah? In the beginning, it will be a little difficult. You may tend to miss out on a lot of points, but as you practice, you will get in the benefit. So symbols, abbreviations, something that you can understand. Yeah? And we'll come to the format also. So when you're talking about speak two speakers in a conversation, it is always good to, you know, in an examination, you know what the question is going to come up. Yeah? They will say, now listen to a conversation between a student and a registrar. Immediately, what do you do? Make a column. Yeah, so now you know it is the student and the registrar. And yes, these, when we were talking about particular names, that is important. Is it a registrar? Is it a clerk? Is it the, say, the coordinator? Who, so they may ask you, who is the student talking to? So if you missed out who it was, you can answer the question. Yeah. So any conversation make follows. So you know exactly. Now question asked by the student, response by the registrar. Yeah. So the main points can be put down in the appropriate columns. So the the topic of the conversation. Now if the student said, I came to uh give my or submit my assignment so even if you don't know you don't write the entire word you know what he's talking about and you have to of course keep track of who said what so as we talked about earlier also the opinions questions points presented these are important yeah so the keywords like register being Assignment, deadline. Usually in the conversations, deadlines come up. Loans. Yeah. Or whatever. Maybe it's talking about there's a change of policy. Credits. Or how many credit hours. All these things you have to be alert when you are listening to. So these bullet points always help. So instead of writing in, now instead of just writing in uh, lines, you can make columns, make bullet points. So just this, 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 these are the points. You know, these are the points. And especially in a lecture, in a lecture, maybe you are not making columns, but marking your bullet points helps. So now we have some time still. So now what we are going to do is we'll listen to a lecture with your own. This is a conversation, okay. not a lecture. So we begin with a conversation. Now everyone get ready with your pen and paper or pencil and paper. Whatever is available to you. Put your headphones on, close your eyes, 
give you give yourself two seconds to focus. Yeah. Got it? Okay, now first thing, I'll start playing and you have to tell me if you can hear clearly. Okay, I'm not very really sure about the sound. Okay, we can begin. This is my pen. And make sure if you have a pencil, you have a standby. So if your pencil breaks in the middle, you're not stuck. Okay? So I'll play. Listen to a conversation between a student and a registrar. Uh, hi, I'd like to drop off my graduation form. I understand you need this in order to process my diploma. Okay, I'll take that. Um, before you leave, let me check our computer. Uh, looks like you're okay for graduation. And, hmm. Oh, sorry. Listen to a conversation between a student and a registrar. Uh, hi, I'd like to drop off my graduation form. I understand you need this in order to process my diploma. Okay, I'll take that. Um, before you leave, let me check our computer. Uh, looks like you're okay for graduation. And, hmm. Actually, I'm getting a warning flag on your academic record here. Really? Yeah. Let's see what's what. Uh, okay, are you familiar with our graduation requirements? Uh, I think so. Well, then you know you need 48 credits in your major field to graduate and at least 24 credits at the intermediate level or higher. Also, after your second year, you have to meet with your department chair to outline a plan for the rest of your time here. In the past, we also issued letters before a student's final year began to let them know what they needed to take in their final year to be okay, but we don't do that anymore. I definitely met with my chairperson two years ago. Uh, he told me that I needed eight more courses at the intermediate level or higher in the last two years to be okay. Uh, so, I'm not sure what the problem is. I, I made sure I got those credits. Unfortunately, the computer's usually pretty reliable. So, I'm not sure what's going on here. It could be that I've taken two basic courses, but coupled both of them with uh, field experiences. Mm, what do you mean? Well... I could only take intro courses because there were no intermediate level courses available for those particular topics. My chairperson told me that if I did independent field research in addition to the assigned work in each course, uh, they would count as intermediate level courses. Uh, my classmates, um, well some of my classmates did this for an easy way to meet their intermediate course requirement, uh, but I did it to get the kind of depth in those topics I was going for. As it turned out, I really enjoyed the field work was a nice supplement to just sitting and listening to lectures. I'm sure that's true, but the computer's still showing them as basic level courses, despite the field work. Uh, I'm not sure what to do then. I, I mean, should I cancel my graduation party? No, no reason to get worried like that. Just contact your chairperson immediately, okay? Uh, tell him to call me as soon as possible so that we can verify your field work arrangement and certify those credits right away. It's not like there's an actual deadline today or anything, but if more than a few weeks go by, we might have a real problem that would be very difficult to fix in time for you to graduate. In fact, there probably would be nothing we could do. I'll get on that. Okay. Yeah. For a long conversation, hmm? were you able to take down some notes, more yeah. or less? Hmm? So before we go on to the actual strategy, let me see what we have got. Okay, anyone of you wants to hold up your paper 
to show me how about you have written down. Okay, that's good. Quite a lot. Okay. So let's see if you've got your points. Yeah. So Ayan, what is the first point you wrote down in the student column? Uh that he came to drop off his graduation form for the diploma. Graduation form, okay. Graduation form or registration form? What was it? I'm not sure. Graduation, 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 graduation. form. Graduation. Okay. Then what was the reaction of the registrar? From the tone of the registrar, what did you get? Uh, the registrar said that he is okay for graduation, but then she started checking her computer. Hmm. So there was a doubt. Yes. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. From the tone, you get the some clue about the conversation. Okay. So what was the second point? Uh, what was the point raised by the registrar, Krishna? Uh, Ma'am, the registrar said that. Uh, the student's graduation requirements were not fulfilled mm -hmm. so he needed uh, some uh, he needed to submit something like 48 credit uh, for major and 24 credits in intermediary something and uh, some also in second year uh, he has to meet a chairperson mm -hmm. yeah. so what was the response of the student Riviti? Ma'am, he said that he had already met the department chair and uh, uh, he is not sure what the problem is. Um, mm -hmm. He had uh, done the intermediate one, uh, uh, already done the intermediate mm -hmm. level. So anything that he said that the chairperson had told him? You, have you got something down? Krishna, have you got something down on that? How many courses or how many credits, something? Eight or more intermediate or higher level courses. So, Kesar, can you tell me what was the response of the registrar? What, anything that you have written down? Even if it is just one word, give me that one word. Um, uh, she said uh, that computers are reliable mm -hmm. and in two years outline a uh, may issue show issue in that matter or written like that. Hmm. So issue. So issue can you recall like what that. it is about? Uh, it is about the credits. Mm -hmm. Any further information on that? Earlier, they issued credit letters, something of that sort was there? Yes, ma'am, they issued letters and later they now they do not require it. Not, not anymore, something of that sort. Yeah? Okay, so next, what did you write? Who's going to tell me? Ma'am, the computer only showed the basic requirement that the student had fulfilled, not the intermediate one. Right. Ma'am, also that uh, he did some field research uh, uh, along with the assignment. Like his uh, few of his uh, classmates also did that. Uh, mm -hmm. He actually enjoyed that that and took it as a supplement. And that. so Arushi, what have you written about that? About the field research part, the student told that uh, he had take uh, taken uh, those uh, basic courses along with in independent field work and as assignments, which met to the mark of as in intermediate level. But the computer did not show that. So, what was the response of the minister to this? She told him to contact the chairperson mm -hmm. since it does not have any deadline, but if more weeks pass by, it will be a problem for his graduation. 
So more or less, I think you have covered all the information. Hmm? Yes, ma'am. Right. It is good. So now when you are taking notes, as we said, take down in either columns. Or you can take down as, like, if you forget to take down in columns, you can go on. But sometimes that becomes a little confusing. So this is the two ways. So when you're talking about the speaker and the female speaker or the male speaker and register, file graduation, get diploma, problem, need certain classes, meet the chair, uh, make the chair, what did the chair say, that thing, if you kept it, 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 it down. Uh, did different classes, field work, and must contact chair, explain, and he can fix the problem. Yeah? So you all got more than this in your notes. And if suppose you are not doing it in columns, then it will come up something like this, which I find a little confusing sometimes. Sometimes even when you are writing in this format, uh, it becomes confusing. So I would prefer the column thing before uh, for any of these type of questions. So now what we'll do is, I think our time is already up. We will continue with this on Friday. Hmm? So you will, what will you come with for class? You will come with your focus and your pen and pencil. Yeah, pen, pencil, paper, focus. That's what we require for our next class. Okay, so now you know, now what you can do in the meantime is, uh, apart from doing, if you want, you can do a reading um, assignment, the next assignment that is there in your books. And we will be doing the, before we go into the questions, you will pick up anything from the net, listen and take down notes. It could be a conversation, it could be, uh, an interview between two people, it could be a lecture, it could be a talk, just practice taking down notes and see how much of it you understand after you have taken down those notes. Yeah, so this is one thing you need to do. And you can do that on a daily basis, not much time, two minutes, three minutes maximum, that much time you can devote on a daily basis. So what will happen is that we make you a pro in taking down notes. So anything you listen to, you know exactly what to take down. You can follow the speed, you can focus. The more you practice, the more you can focus. Yeah? So now that's it for today then. Any doubts on this? Hmm? Arushi? No, ma'am. Any questions? No? Okay, then. Thank you so much, then. So, we'll meet again on Friday. Yeah? And we'll do some more practice and some questions. Maybe we'll go back to the one we listened to, and then we'll go. Right? Okay, then. Okay, I forgot to ask. All of you are, up here, are applying this year? You started with your applications, I suppose. Hmm? Are you no, see? Um, actually, I'm in 11th. Okay, you are in 11th. Are you see? You are in 11th. You are also in 11th. Revati? I'm 11th. Okay, so you are also. Okay, sir? What are you doing? I'm, I've started. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ma'am, she is also in 11th. Okay. She is also in 11th. Okay, so you can focus on the exams. You don't have any problem 
you can apply easily next year. Okay, then. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.